going to pray heavenly father we just pray for greg as you cause him to be able to minister father under the anointing that you have for him tonight father we desire and we're just telling you from our hearts we desire that the office of the prophet would shine through tonight Lord, he stands in the office of a teacher and it stands in the office of the prophet. And there's times he teaches out of the office of the teacher. Then there's times he teaches and speaks out of the office of the prophet. So, Father, we would desire, and we're just saying this is our desire, but you do what's best for us. We would desire that he would move and operate in the office of the prophet tonight. And we need that, Father God. Our church, our congregation, our people, we need that, that particular anointing, even this night. We trust you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Praise the Lord. Well, the Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank God for his goodness and his wonderful works. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I was driving down the road one day, and, uh, you know, it's interesting that you sang this song tonight. I was, as I was driving, I just began to say, you're a good, 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 good father. You're a good, 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 good father to me. And and God just be, began to give me line after line after line to that. And then it wasn't too long after that, a song was written about it. He's a good father, isn't he? Amen. There's some people, they didn't have a, a good natural dad. But your heavenly father, uh, he can be all of that and more. He could be very good to you. Amen. He's good to me. Everybody said out loud, He's good to me. Hallelujah. God is a good God. The Father, the Bible says, Himself loveth you. You know, when I was little, and I don't mean I heard it from Him, but, you know, I knew that, that Jesus was good. You know, we sang songs about Jesus loves the little children. And, and you know, Jesus loves us and you know that that was known to me but I wasn't sure about God he was you know different <laughs> I, I didn't understand a lot about God until one day I come across a verse that said the father himself loveth you and, and then I realized you know for God so loved the world that he gave it God is love and he loves us and he cares about us and wants and really wants to do more for us than than we really want for us. You might say, "Oh, I don't know about that, Brother Craig." You know, there, there's things that I need. And why does it seem so hard? Why do we go from one problem to the next if God loves us so much? Uh, that's an easy question. <clears throat> you see, a lot of times we end up doing things our way rather than God's way. And, and it's, it's kind of like, you know, when your kids did that, it's like, fine. If, if, you know, if, if that's the decision you're going to make, you'll suffer the consequences of it. Now, wasn't, wasn't it best for your natural children when they obeyed you and they did what you, they did what you asked them to do? They took out the trash. They cleaned the room. They did, they did exactly the way you said. And then, I mean, they had the fullness of your blessing, the fullness of your benefit, the fullness of everything. Because, see, they, they loved you. They honored you. They respected you. And yet, a lot of times, you know, here we're wanting all these benefits from God, and we're doing our own thing, and, you know, God's been speaking to people, you know, this is what I want you to do, this is my plan for your life, and you keep on going out and doing this and doing that, doing your own thing, and then we're wondering, why does it seem so hard? Why does it seem like, you know, we're just going from one problem to the next? Uh, it, really, we should wake up, <laughs> amen, and, and smell the coffee, as they say. <clears throat> and realize that, you know, we don't run this show. You know, I've had people say to me, especially when I was pastoring, you know, uh, you know, why don't you do this? Well, I don't do what I want to do. Why would I do what you want me to do? Now, there's a lot of truth in that, to be honest. I don't even do what I want to do. Amen. I mean, you and I have to be willing at the drop of a hat, we'll do anything God asks us to do. See, that's part of living deep. Amen? It's part of living deep. And I, there, there's some people I sense that in the script that, that there's some tugging going on on some people's hearts. Because we've, 
we've done a lot of things ourselves. We've done a lot of things because, you know, this will benefit me. This is what my family needs. This is what, you know, I, I really want to do this and need to do this. And so we've allowed other things to factor in. And, and we've just really not checked in with the Holy Spirit a whole lot like we should. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. <clears throat> God is good. See, sometimes, now see, sometimes God is merciful like that. And uh, he won't just call you out, make you stand up in front of everybody, and get rebuked real good. Now, <clears throat> you're, you're different. You need to be rebuked sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not rebuking you. But, but there's some people that God's just flat merciful. And, and he's allowing you to just keep smiling and looking forward. Nobody knows that we're talking about you. And, and gives you the opportunity without just reading your mail. Now, see, I've, I've cracked my head so hard. And I've, I've fallen so flat on my face. I have actually prayed this, Lord. Lord, embarrass me if you have to. I don't care if you've got to absolutely humiliate me in front of a multitude. Uh, don't ever let me go down, you know, this road or that road ever again like that. Amen. Praise. But see, God is merciful, and and I know there's at least somebody that God's given you a chance right now to make adjustments and make a chance to to step out and to obey Him and do what what God's asked you to do. Now, see, here's the thing about it: is now I, I learned this from Brother Hagen. He's my spiritual father, and. And I just follow his footsteps, just like the Lord is, you know, anointing me to do. And uh, he was ministering in a certain place. And he, the way he put it, it was just dry as a shuck. I mean, it was just not, no move of the Spirit. Nothing was happening. Nobody getting saved. Nobody filled the Holy Ghost. Nobody healed. <clears throat> and so he's praying. He's fasting. And I mean... It's one of the worst meetings that he's ever had. And a gentleman stands up in the congregation and gives out a message of tongues interpretation. And it was just like the whole atmosphere of the church changed and the Spirit of God began to move and to pour out and, and the blessing of people got saved and tremendous things happened beginning that night. So he gets back to his room after that service and he's uh, talking to the Lord. He says, God, we're going to have to have this out. That day, and he's telling the Lord this, he said I, he was driving his car and got over into the wrong part of the town, kind of the, you know, where, where the taverns were and the bars, kind of the, you know, the, the darker side of town. And the man that gave out the message in tongues interpretation, he saw him that afternoon go into a tavern, one of those dark dives, as they called them back then. And there he was in church giving out a message in tongues and interpretation. And he said, now here's sister so-and-so that's been serving you faithfully for the last 45 years. How come you to use him and just today he was in this dark dive and how come you didn't use her that's been serving me faithful, serving you faithfully for the last 40 years? And God spoke to him and said, what you don't know about that, that gentleman that gave out the message in tongue interpretation. He said, yes, he did go into that bar, into that tavern today. But the moment he stepped into that, that door, the Lord said, my spirit arrested him. And he said, my God, what am I doing in here? And he turned around and walked right back out. And he repented. And, he's, and, and the Lord said, I forgave him and don't even know that he did anything wrong. Doesn't bring it up. And what you don't know, he said to Brother Hagin about Sister So-and-so, was that 45 years ago, I asked her to go to the mission field, and she hasn't obeyed me yet, and I'll never use her until she obeys me. Amen? Now see, obedience is what determines uh, whether we're exiting the highway or cruising on down the highway. I don't want to exit. I want to stay on track. I want to stay on course. And so that means my number one responsibility towards God is I got to be an obeyer. Plain and simple. 
That's something that I, I've just learned over the process of time is, you know, I'm not just a man. I'm not just a husband. I'm not just a minister, a man of God. I'm an obeyer, first of all. That is number one, an obeyer. That's my job. And, and there'll be times at home or in the motel room or in the car, I'll just confess, I'm an obeyer. What a, what a wonderful thing to confess about yourself. I'm an obeyer. Because that just keeps all the plumbing clear, so to speak. Now, what does that mean? God wants to, to drain some heaven our direction. He wants to, to release and unloose things in our lives. But if we're all choked up with disobedience and unbelief and, and, and rebellion and stuff like that, now there's people that will say, well, I'm not just some gross rebellious person. If we're not obeyers, that's exactly what we are. Amen. There's, see, when, when the Holy Spirit is tugging on our hearts and prompting us, it's our responsibility to respond to him affirmatively. Amen. See, it, it, here's the thing of it is, is if things just aren't working the way that they should in our life, on whatever level, we have to go back and see did we take an exit that we're not supposed to? Did we get off track into an area that, that we shouldn't have? There's a minister that I know. I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, you, you talk about tragedy in their, in, in their life. He and his family. I mean desperate, dire tragedy. And the Lord sent me to minister to him one time. And well, I was going to put it all in the pastor, but it wasn't just all the pastor's fault. Uh, <clears throat> but even ministers can yield to Satan and, and totally derail the direction that God's wanting to go. And that, that particular person with all this tragedy and terrible things in their life took an exit of offense got offended at other brothers and sisters in the Lord and didn't deal with that offense and it allowed tragedy to come in to, the, to his life and into his family it would be so easy for them to get back on course with their health with their finances with the plan and purpose of God for their lives I mean, if you were to look at this person today, it is, their, their life is a shell and a shamble of what it should be. Because they took a detour and allowed themselves to be offended at other people. Offense is baggage that is just not worth carrying. Amen? Have you ever tried to go through an airport and, and you've got bags and you, you, you're having difficulty managing these bags you got to get to your gate and I mean you need help well a fence is a bag that's just too heavy to carry and so it's better to not even pack it don't even take it now I, I say this it's impossible to offend me because I just don't take it but I sure pass up lots of opportunities. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that offenses never come. It doesn't mean that you're just, you know, Superman and, and you know, they can shoot bullets at you and, and they just all deflect. That's not what I'm saying. <clears throat> Words are powerful things. Actions are powerful things. But the love of God is more powerful. Amen. The Word of God is more powerful. Now, see, these, these are important words. This is an important message. You might say, well, yeah, Brother Greg, you know, I sure wish you'd prophesy. I am. I sure wish that you would, you know, have a word for us. I do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I sure wish you know, you'd call somebody out. I am. I'm talking to the whole church by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. This is something for all of us. And I know that the, the Spirit of God is tapping on some people, even now. Because there's been things that you just haven't 100% yielded to. 
I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not pointing a finger. You know, if I point a finger at this sister here, then I've got at least three pointing back at me. So I make an examination of myself. Am I walking with what I'm supposed to? Do I need to repent in any area of my life? You know the nice thing about repentance? It means reversal. Now, Brother Albert, have you ever been like out on some of those old bush roads that get pretty sticky and slimy and, and, and slippery? And Have you ever been to one of those places where, uh, you know, the, the further you keep going, the messier it's getting, the worse it's getting? And pretty soon you come to a place where you got to get out of that situation. I've been there lots of times, going down some of those bush trails, maybe on a 4x4 four four or, or something, <clears throat> until you just got to put that thing in reverse and get out of there. And that's what repentance is. Repentance is, I mean, the greatest gift ever afforded uh, to humanity is the ability to repent. That means to stop on your tracks and turn around and go back the other direction. Amen? That's what repentance is. It's not, you know, falling flat in your face and screaming and pulling your hair out and throwing dirt on you. That's not repentance. That's flesh. Sorry to say. Crawling on your knees and, and, and just screaming and clawing. No, that, that's flesh. Repentance is real. It means, God, <clears throat> I realize I made a mistake. I realize that I'm going the wrong direction. <clears throat> and we stop, and we turn around, and we're heading back. Right back to the spot where we got off in the first place, and then we keep on going like we never missed it. Amen? Plain and simple. Glory. <clears throat> There's a good word. Praise the Lord, Brother Greg. <clears throat> that was a good word. Hallelujah. Amen. It's something when you've got to give your own amens and pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to share a few things with you. I do have some things I, I do want to get to <clears throat> for tonight. Now, tomorrow night, Lord willing, which I, I believe that for sure that he is, <clears throat> um, we're going to minister, lay hands on people, <clears throat> minister healing to those that, that might need healing, <clears throat> going to lay hands on the, the prayer cloths. <clears throat> I was going through some of this uh, earlier today. And, I mean, there is socks and there's all kinds of stuff that, that's up there. I never thought about laying hands on people's socks. But that was a good idea. Whoever brought those, uh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> that's good. Um, let's look over, if we would, to Ezekiel 47. We'll turn over there first. Ezekiel Now, this, this verse has been quoted. But we're going to look at it here to begin with. I'm not entirely 100% sure where we're going to uh, go with all of this. But I know we're going to end up someplace good. Um, you know, my dear saintly mother, she's in heaven, of course, you know that. But... Uh, <clears throat> uh, she would do this sometimes because, you know, we used to go for rides and different things. And, and I remember one time being in the vehicle with her and in Tulsa, and we got lost. And she pointed and said, that person looks like they know where they're going. We'll follow them for a while. <laughs> and so she'd follow them for a while and follow this person. And, and eventually, you know, it all turned out all right because we made it. But... Uh, that's kind of, there are so many things that I have on the inside of me. I'm not exactly sure where, where we're going to go in all this, but the ride's going to be fun. Amen. And we might point to somebody else and follow them for a little while. But notice here, Ezekiel 47. <clears throat> Ezekiel 47. And then verse 2. It says, Then brought he me out of the way, of the gate northward <clears throat> and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters the waters were to the ankles 
Again he measured a thousand and brought me through waters and the waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Now what are we talking about uh, in, in our times together? We've been talking about the deep. We've been talking about going deeper. Now, what you see in this verse is you've got a, a, a measurement, if you would, of these waters. You've got different stages that the prophet was taken through. Waters that were at the ankles, water that was at the knees, water that was at the loins, and then finally waters that his feet couldn't touch the bottom, and he's carried by these waters. But what I want us to see is that there was a progression. There were stages. There were steps. There was development from where he began to where he eventually ended up. Can we all see that? <clears throat> and these, these were uh, shown to us by measurements of a thousand cubits uh, at each step and at each stage. Right? Now, when it comes to going deeper, we never start out where we ultimately end up. Right? <clears throat> because if we were all of a sudden thrown into eventually where we're heading, uh, it would be a disaster. All right? <clears throat> now, I'm sure you all have had this experience, but uh, <coughs> I was swimming someplace. And, you know, the, the, the water at the edge was shallow. It was warm. It was clear. <clears throat> but you could see that just a few feet out, it went down very quick. And, and even as an adult, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit scary <clears throat> to, to jump from the shallow comfort area where it was warm into the deeper area where your feet couldn't touch the bottom anymore. Now, of course, you know, we all jump in, but yet even as an adult, you see that, and th there's a little bit of hesitation because it's deeper there. <clears throat> now, where we need to be is not satisfied just being on the shoreline. And so many people are satisfied just getting their toes wet. <clears throat> and we see that there, there's a deeper progression. And we're, we're being called to come out to a deeper place. <clears throat> but so many times it means that we have to leave our comfort zone. We have to leave what's familiar to us to get out to that deeper place. But that's ex exactly where God wants us because it means it's a place that we're dependent upon Him. We're not able to make contact with the ground ourselves. We have to depend upon something or someone to sustain us, to uphold us, to lift us up. Amen. Now see, in, in just talking about this, the glory of God just begins to come in. Amen. Because see, that's where God's wanting us to be is where we're, we're not just dependent upon ourselves and what we can do but we're dependent upon God for him to carry us that's the best place to be now one day I was uh, really kind of trying to develop a message there was some things that I was beginning to see about being one with God <clears throat> what, now I, I don't have time to get into all that but, but I, I was studying that and there's a lot of scripture that has to do with with you and I being one with Him. And I begin to see all the benefit and all the, tre I mean, tremendous benefit. And it, it's pretty lopsided too. Uh, we pretty much get all the benefit of, of being one with Him. And I, I, I'm just really getting overwhelmed with, with what it will do for you and I to walk in the light of being one with Him. And I'm trying to absorb all this. And I'm meditating on it. Thinking about it. And so one day I was, I was getting into the shower. And I, I, I say this all the time. God just speaks to me when I get in the shower. Uh, and, and sometimes I will just go take a shower. Just to hear God speak to me. And, and I was thinking the other day. Well you know how come is it God always speaks to me when I'm in the shower. One I confess it all the time. <clears throat> that God speaks to me in the shower. But he speaks to me in other places too. <clears throat> but when I get in the shower, that's one of the first things I do. My arms go up and I'm just starting to talk to the Lord, meditating on the things of God and 
worshiping him. Put him in the shower. And of course, it's a natural place for him to speak is in that kind of environment. <clears throat> and so I had been meditating on one with him. And I got in the shower. And I said, Father, I'm, I'm beginning to see a little bit of all the, the huge benefit and blessing that there is being one with you. But what is our responsibility back to you? What are you looking for? Now, I, I'm seeing all that I'm getting out of this, this relationship. But what are you asking of me? And I'll tell you what, what he said to me, I had to grab the walls of the shower, I would have fell up right out. It came as such a striking answer, but it was only two words, or, th or three, abide in me. That's what he's, when he spoke that, it came as such a striking word, I, I'm not kidding, I had to grab the walls of the shower to keep from falling down. Go with me to John 15 if you would. <clears throat> What's our response? How do we walk deeper? What are we, what are we talking about when, when we say, abide in me? Well, we're going to look at that here in just a second. Now, find John chapter 15. Now, you're familiar with this, right? I know that... Uh, Pastor's probably taught on prayer a number of times and uh, gotten into John chapter 15. But let's read it with a different understanding. Let's read it with the context of going deeper. Verse 1, John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch, that's you, in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I've spoken to. I just want to meddle just for a minute. <clears throat> you're clean, you're pruned through the word that God speaks to you. God doesn't go around breaking people's arms, causing uh, motor vehicle accidents to correct you to discipline you, to spank you, that's not God. The Bible says that's the enemy. He's come but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Anything that steals, kills, and destroys is not God, it's the devil. Any kindergartner spiritually ought to know that. But look how many people, well, you know, God broke my arm to teach me some kind of a lesson. The Bible says right here, you are clean, you are pruned through the Word. How does God correct you? How does God chasten you? Through the Word. Then it's up to you to do something about it, right? Amen. Now you are clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you're the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Men gather them into, or, or men gather them and cast them in the fire, and they're burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, and I have loved you, continue, that word continue is also the word abide, ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that you might remain, or abide, in you, and that your joy might be full. Now, in those 11 verses, count how many times the word abide appears. I never read it like that before. 
when the Holy Spirit spoke that to my spirit about abide in me, and I got into this 15th chapter of John's Gospel again and again and almost a dozen times in 11 verses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times in eleven verses. Abide, 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 abide. What is God wanting us to do? Abide in Him. Let me tell you what that word abide means. It means to rest or to dwell, to tarry or stay. To continue permanently in the same state, to be firm and immovable, <clears throat> to remain, to continue, to wait for, be prepared for, to await, to endure or sustain, to bear, to endure, to bear patiently. Interesting. It just lit literally means that we're supposed to continually remain consistently in His presence. Amen? That's what God wants. What does God want for you and I? Here we're talking about the deep. We're talking about having manifestations of signs and wonders and miracles and, and, and those are wonderful. But what is God really ultimately after? God is not looking for a theater. Amen? He's not just looking for a stage to perform on. He wants to abide in you and with you. Amen? That's what God is ultimately looking for. He's wanting people that will abide, remain continually fixed, immovable in Him. You can do that and put chicken wings on your table. You can, you can do that and go to Staples and buy church envelopes. You can, you can do that wherever you are. You can constantly, continually be abiding in the presence of God. What makes the difference? You do. God can't change. So if there's anything that's going to change, it's going to have to be you and I on our end. So what does that mean? <clears throat> it means that you're just constantly, he's constantly on your mind, on your heart. You're thinking about him, talking to him. Now, there was a gentleman, uh, th this was a while back, really got under a lot of bondage about spending time with the Lord. <clears throat> because he wanted to get his hour in. You know, I'm going to spend an hour with the Lord, an hour with the Lord. And, and he was busy. Things were coming up. And, and there was a lot of times that, that he didn't get his hour in. And he'd feel so bad. He'd feel so condemned. And, and I could see it was really bothering him. And so I sat down with him. And I, I, I said to him, um, do you love your wife? And he said, well, of course I do. Did you go around today? I've got to get my hour in with my wife. I've got to get my hour in with my wife. I've got to get my hour in with my wife. And were you condemned about it? He said, no, I talk to her all the time. I'll, I'll text her. You know, we'll, we'll text little kisses back and forth. And, and, and we'll, we'll have little sweetheart messages back and forth, you know, sometimes. And then I'll call her for two or three minutes, you know, because she's busy and I'm busy. But we'll, we'll find a minute or two to, to call each other. And, you know, never, ever did he say, I've got to get my hour in. I've got to get my hour in. I've got to get my hour in. No, he abode with her. He was constantly in fellowship. Now, not constantly in each other's face. All right? Because <clears throat> they had jobs. They had responsibilities. They're doing things. They're both business people. <clears throat> and, but yet they were constantly in fellowship with one another because they abode with one another. And that's the same relationship even to a, a higher degree that we're to have with God. We can constantly be in fellowship with Him. 
Amen. It doesn't mean that we've got to get our hour in and then we're free for the rest of the day. No, we just we're constantly in fellowship with God. Amen. Amen. And 11 times in 11 verses, he points out, abide, abide, remain, continue, abide. <clears throat> That's our job. Plain and simple. Now, go with me, if you would, to Exodus 33. I want to show you something here. Exodus 33. Are you going to think it all tonight? Good. Now, <clears throat> you remember when Moses, in speaking to the Lord, said, show me your glory? I want us to look at that. Exodus thirty-three eighteen. 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will procl proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I'll show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there's a place by me. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. Now, we don't, we don't have time just to get into all that. I would love to take time to get into that. In the Old Testament... God didn't dwell in his people. He dwelt with them. Not anymore. You and I are the temple of the living God. But we're going to see something here in just a second that, that's powerful. And it shall come to pass, verse 22, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. You talk about a privilege. For, for, for a human being come into that kind of a contact and manifestation of God <clears throat> it was unheard of why did this happen because he had a desire that desire caused him to, to be propelled out of his dispensation where stuff like this did not happen and it put him into a position to see something that no other human being had ever seen before. Not like this. But. And, and I have to give credit where credit's due. Pastor Bobby Hernandez. Is the one that originally taught this. And I heard it first from him. <clears throat> he said this, this is not. Just God. Skirting past. Moses. This is not just. A drive by. And then he just sees God waving. You know a, as he's leaving. Where it says he'll see the back parts. Literally, he is going to see God from the inside out. God's plan and God's goal was never just to be with people. It was to be in them and we in him. Amen. How many, what, 140 times I think it is in the New Testament, it says... In Christ, in Him, in whom, through whom, so on and so forth. The revelation of the new covenant is the fact that we're now in Him. God was giving us a picture of what our dispensation, our covenant, our relationship to God is not just a 
drive-by, not just some casual passing glance where we talk about what God used to do a hundred years ago. We don't just read in books about what God used to do, but we're to have a living, vital relationship with God, continually abiding in Him and in His presence, because deep is calling unto deep to come into the very depths of God. Paul prayed. Well, let's look at it real quick. Go with me to Ephesians, if you would. <clears throat> the book of Ephesians. Are you getting anything? I don't know about you, but I'm glad I came tonight. <clears throat> Paul, Ephesians chapter 3. <coughs> praying for the church. Verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. Look at this. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Paul prayed that the church would have a revelation in part of how deep God was. Think about that. You know, in Paul's day, well, before Paul was saved, he was one of the greatest persecutors of the church. I mean, made sport of them, fed them to lions, killed them, crucified them, filleted them alive, martyred them. And yet, scores and scores of Thousands upon thousands of people were ushered into the kingdom of God, even in the midst of some of the most terrible persecution. Why is that? Paul was praying part of it right here, that, you, that they would know <laughs> the length and breadth and depth and height. That there was a realm in God that was not reserved for the prophet, the priest, or the king. But that any person could be born again and come into the very holy of holies in the presence of God without fear of death, without fear of retaliation, condemnation, no fear, no guilt. That they could come in. They didn't have to be represented by the high priest. They could go into God's presence for themselves and have intimate communion and fellowship with the Creator of the universe. Can I can I tell you something? <clears throat> Fancy people don't don't intimidate me. But what do I mean fancy people? I mean people that have power, prestige, money and stuff like that. And uh, to be real honest with you I can just crawl up on my daddy's lap. Not this daddy. I mean the, the creator of heaven and earth. King of kings and lord of lords. And I can talk with him and have a relationship with him. And it, it gets to the point where it doesn't matter if somebody's famous down here on the earth. It just doesn't compare. <laughs> Amen. It just, now, now thank God for for important people. Thank God for people that, <clears throat> that have large platforms and so, that sort of thing. <clears throat> but it just doesn't compare to, to the kind of intimacy that we can have with our Heavenly Father. Think about that for a minute. You know, people are clamoring because, you know, so-and-so, you know, <clears throat> was on TV. Well, that's all right. That's okay for them. But our relationship with God can be so deep and so intimate that things of this world begin to lose their, their appeal. <clears throat> the Bible talks about setting your affection on things above. Amen? Setting our affection, our heart's desire on things that are high. God doesn't mind you having nice things on the earth, but that's not where our passion is. Amen? God doesn't mind us being rich on this earth. Now, 
when, when, you, when you say that word to some people, to them it's like a dirty four-letter word. Rich. <clears throat> Filthy. Rich. No. God's against people being covetous. Because that's the issue of the heart. God doesn't mind you having things. Amen. God doesn't mind you being blessed. <clears throat> but at the same time, where's our affection? That's what God's wanting. Because see, that has to do with where we abide. What's precious to me, <clears throat> what is the most valuable to me, is spiritual. It's God. Now, He'll give you all the things that you want in the flesh. But when you set your heart on Him. See, the Bible says <clears throat> that, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. How? When? Even as your soul prospers. Well, if God does all these things for me, then I'll serve Him. doesn't work that way. Well, you know, if God proves to me, you know, shows me a sign or a wonder. The Bible says it's an evil and adulterous generation that seeks after a sign. God wants people <coughs> that abide with Him. Amen? Hallelujah. That abide with Him. <coughs> I'd like everybody, if you would, tonight I, I saw us just coming down here to the front. Hallelujah. See, you know, the glory of God has been in this sanctuary oh, for quite some time now. I wonder, if I, now I don't just make a line. I, I just saw us all kind of crowded down here. Let's come into God's presence. Let's turn our hearts thank you. Just to, to be sensitive to Him. Amen? Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Sometimes it just means that we're making a step forward. We want to put some act to what we've heard. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we're just we're just so honored to come into your presence. To praise you, to magnify you to be doers of the word not just hearers only thank you Lord say this with me out loud Heavenly Father I act upon this word from this moment forward with all of my heart I consecrate myself to abide in you I know I'm saved filled with the Holy Ghost I'm a believer of the word I'll walk in faith, but I'm going to abide with you. I'm going to live for you. Learn to walk in your presence every day of my life. Hallelujah. Now see, he sees you. Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you. Lift up our, your hands. Let's lift up our voices and just begin to praise him and magnify. Lord, you're so good. You are a good, 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 good Father. <clears throat> you watch over us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. If the singers would come and, and just sing that song, He's a good Father. Hallelujah. If, if they're still here. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just stay in an attitude of prayer and praise. <clears throat> the Bible says that we come into His presence with singing. Into His courts with praise. Hallelujah. That's how we make our way before God. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to come before Him. We're going to take a step tonight. We're going to abide in Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are a good, 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 good Father. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you. 
We glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is what He wants. This is what God wants. He wants us to abide with Him. Remember, you men, when you fell in love with your wives and just called them up out of the blue, dropped by to see them, and you were courting them. You know, it's a good thing to court the Lord. Wake up in the morning, first thing out of your mouth is, Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I magnify you. Because he's a good father. He's good to us. And he wants to be with you. But we got to come in the way he's invited us to come in. Hallelujah. Oh, his presence is here. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Just magnify him tonight. Just come into his presence. Just get in the flow. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify you. It's who you are, Lord. Lord, we magnify you. We praise you. We glorify you for who you are. You're our Father. Lord, we magnify you. We come into your presence. No one, no one means more to us than you do. Nothing is more important to us than you. It's who I am. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are perfect in all Hallelujah. Your oh, you're so wonderful, perfect Lord. Perfect in all <clears throat> You're so glorious and powerful. Perfect we thank you for your glory and your presence your in this place to today. Hallelujah. You are perfect in all of your ways. Wonderful. It's who you are. You're wonderful, it's who Lord. You are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. It's who I am. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who Hallelujah. you are. It's who you are. Thank you, Lord. It's who you are. It's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father, Thank you, Lord. it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I love by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. In all of your ways to us. Thank you, Lord. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, 
It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Hallelujah. It's who you are. Thank you, Lord. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. To us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. share with you a little secret about all this. This is what God wants. He wants people to abide with Him. Continually, unmovable, we abide with Him all the time. You know what the Bible says about people that abide with Him? They'll ask what they will and it shall be done. Think about that. Just because you abide in Him, it says whatever you ask, it'll be done. Well, yeah, but what if I were to ask for something crazy that 
really would be bad for me. Well, you're not abiding in him then. Think about it. When we're abiding with him and we're a partaker of his divine nature and we're just continually in the presence of God and, and I, I mean, we're drawing from him and he's drawing from us and there is just a, a, such a beautiful flow and a communion between my Heavenly Father and myself. You can't get any more holy than that. It has nothing to do with the, the length of your sleeves or the length of your hair or, you know, whether you got makeup on or jewelry on or off. No, but that, that, that's nothing. But God's wanting people that will walk with him. Amen. Continually tapped into the vine. Because of ourselves, we can do nothing. We already saw that in John 15. But when you're attached to the vine, that means there's a continual flow and a continual supply from heaven to you and I all the time. Instead of you needing somebody to come and anoint you with oil and lay hands upon you, you're going out and doing that for people that just aren't quite where you are. It means that when you come to church, you're not just scraping into the parking lot on E spiritually and just barely making it in to get your fix for a few more days. It means you've been in the presence of God. And you're getting revelation at home and you're bringing that to church. How is it that in, in 1 Corinthians 14, how is it that every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath interpretation, <clears throat> hath revelation? All these things are becoming the supply that we bring to church. See, that's what God wants. That is truly a spiritual church. Amen. Amen. I, no, don't get me wrong. I love signs, wonders, and miracles. But really, that's for people that don't know a whole lot. <laughs> that maybe they've just been so stubborn they need to kick in the seat of the pants to get them going again. Amen. But really, where God wants us to get to is way up here with Him. Where we're constantly eating from his table, constantly receiving from him. And when we're receiving, there's a natural outflow that just begins to affect. And that doesn't mean that everybody gets behind the pulp. It doesn't mean everybody, you know, gets behind the microphone. But everybody's bringing their supply. Everybody's doing what God's called them to do. Amen? Amen. Like, Albert, you have a wonderful supply. Hallelujah. You have a wonderful supply. Ha 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 Wonderful supply. Wonderful. That's needed much needed hallelujah thank you Lord hallelujah <clears throat> just sing it very quietly he's a good God he's a good God hallelujah you can go ahead and say the words if you want hallelujah thank you Lord Isn't that wonderful it's to be loved by Him? Oh, glory it's to God. Hallelujah. Think about that. Good that He it's would love are. us. Isn't that good? It's who you are. Hallelujah. It's who you are. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. Thank you, Lord. You are perfect in all of your ways. Thank you, Lord. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. To us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. It's who you are, and I'm loved Hallelujah. by you. It's who I am. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. You're, You're a good, good, good father. father. It's who you are. Hallelujah. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. Let me just say this. It's in moments like this. What, what do you need? What do you need from the Lord? Just reach out and take it. By faith, whatever it is that you need, just receive it. Whatever it is. Not everything comes by laying on of hands. But he is here. His presence is here. He's a good father. I mean, I, I, I know what my natural dad would do for me. He would do everything in his power to make sure that I made it. And he's gone and done those things. But how much more can our Heavenly Father do? He's here tonight. Whatever you need, just reach out and receive it. Hallelujah. By faith, receive it. And take it. Say it's mine. Hallelujah. I take it now. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Sing a little bit more. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're a good, good father. He is so good. <laughs> oh, you're so good, Lord. Whatever it is, reach out and take it. What do you need from the Lord tonight? It's yours. You can have it. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. Thank you, Lord. It's who you are. Thank you, Lord. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. Hallelujah. It's who I am. <laughs> Glory to God. Am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. You're a good, good, good father. It's who you, you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. Thank you, Lord. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. Let's let him love on you tonight. Let your father love on you as you love on him. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Thank you, Lord. To us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are perfect in all of your ways. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To us, you're a good, good father. Oh, you're so good, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. We worship you. We magnify you. It's who you are. Lord, you're so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am. You've been it's so good to us. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. Thank you, Lord. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. 
Hallelujah. Well, how many of you, you know that you've gone a little bit further tonight? Amen. Some of you might better say that by faith. Amen. Gone further. Gone for. I know I have. Amen. You, you can come if you want to. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can be seated. Just stay in that attitude of just enjoying His presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I, I haven't arrived. You, you, you know that. I'm still growing just like all of you are. But there's some things that just don't work for me anymore. Because God expects more from you as you grow and, and develop. Amen. I had a lady one time come to me and say, Brother Greg, I, I wish you hadn't preached that. I'm like, why? She said, now I'm responsible to do something with it. But it, it caused her to grow up a little bit more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just the glory of God just been in here for about the longest that I've ever seen the glory just hover. There's even a few moments where I really had to look at my Bible even to see what it said. Hallelujah. You see, when you touch on things that are important to Him, uh, that, that's where stuff happens. We're not interested in playing games. Mickey Mouse services, smoking lights. I want to be in an environment where where God is and where He's moving and manifesting Himself. Amen. In whatever ways that He wants to. You know when when God come upon the prophet, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon I believe it was Elijah. And it says he outran the king's chariot. You know he had the best horse in the land. Had the fastest chariot. Amen. But when the hand of the Lord came upon him, he ran. Amen. Whatever is God. Whatever that he wants you to do. That's what we want. Psalm 126 talks about when the Lord turned again to the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed, and our mouth was filled with laughter. Why? Because, I mean, the world was saying, the Lord has done great things for them, whereof we are glad. Amen? So there's joy, there's rejoicing, there's laughing because of the Spirit of God. Amen? Oh, there's so much, so much that's in the deep. That, I mean, we, we should run from the shore and jump in. Amen? Praise the Lord. 